Hey guys, welcome back inside the Crazy Ant Farm. Oh my goodness, we got the one and only Kevin L. Johnson coming on yeah. from Ozark, Netflix's hot streaming show right now. Yes, yes indeed. I mean, this one's season three, man. Best season yet. Yeah, that's all a lot and, of people uh, are saying. Yeah, he talks about that. And I, I think you guys are really going to like this interview because he has one of the most unorthodox paths to get to where he's at today. Yeah. It's really interesting to listen to, man. Hell yeah, all the up and coming are going to love it because, I mean, he would say that this is his first big breakout role. So, I mean, you just got to keep going until you find that specific role that makes you a superstar. Right? Like, what did he, <laughs> his, his exact words, I think, were like, changed my life. Yeah. You you know it's a defining role when you say, changed my life. Exactly. So, you know. Exactly. But that's later on in the show. But now, let's get crazy. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Crazy Ant Farm. Holy moly, we are on episode 108 this week. 108. Yeah, yeah man. Okay, so 108, that means we're already two months past the big 100th show. Shit. We're already a month into our third year. And most That's importantly, wild. we're only five episodes away from our forever guest, Rebecca Kennedy, returning. Yeah, for sure. R- right? She's yeah. averaging every 13 episodes. Exactly. So we're, we're five away from Rebecca Kennedy returning. So that's how quickly this year is moving, man. Exactly. It, it seems like forever with the whole corona, we're stuck inside it. But for us, it's moving pretty fast. Yeah, Shit, honestly, I mean. honestly. I mean, so many phenomenal guests like we teased at the top of the inter- or at top of the show. We got Kevin L. Johnson coming on. And I mean, Rebecca Kennedy basically is another host now. And it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's crazy. It's crazy. But of course, your host for this fantastic show, or myself, JLo Fantastic, and the one and only Mal. What's up? Yes, we got a lot to talk about in industry news. There's a lot of Disney stuff. Mm-hmm. Quibi finally launched. We're going to be talking about those numbers yeah. and comparing it to Disney, which I think is kind of wrong because totally. it's not even on the same wavelength. Like, there's no reason to compare Quibi to Disney Plus no, when no. they are coming at you with all original content and Disney Plus is backed with like 50 plus years of family friendly epicness. Shit, almost 100. Yeah. Almost 100 years. Exactly. So. That's I've got I'm a saying. theory on that though. We're going to talk about that. I got a theory about why that's happening. Definitely. Definitely. But yeah, a lot of great stuff happening in the entertainment industry. And of course, great things happening here at Crazy Ant Media. Our Always. freaking website, www.crazyantmedia.com, has the latest and greatest Crazy Ant Media true. gear. And like I said in our weekly update, State of the Company address, we did find a website for those bonk boxers, guys. If you need those bonk drawers, <laughs> we true. got you covered. Right. Just email us, let us know, let us get your size, and then we will send you that quote. So, so okay, dad joke warning. Oh, God. Dad joke warning. <laughs> so if you get our bonk boxers... Would that mean that you have ants in the pants? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. I warned you. I like what? it. I warned you. I it's a like dad it. joke. <laughs> but yes, visit our <laughs> website, crazyantmedia.com. You, you can stay up to date with Crazy Ant Media on our projects, our podcast personally, and our weekly updates, and our merchandise website because we're putting new merch on there basically every week. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, check it out, guys. Check it out. If you are looking for a specific gift or just a random ass gift for anyone that you know, we got you covered especially in the apparel game. So definitely check that out, crazyantmedia.com. Now let's get this show started. And we're starting off with the mega epic Disney Mouse House slash Marvel. That's right. <laughs> Woo! Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now that we've gotten Mickey and Goofy out of the way. Right. Uh, <laughs> you decide who's Goofy, who's uh, not. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 okay, fuck it. We're both Goofy. Uh, you know, you know. But this is Marvel. Exactly. We're talking Marvel. Exactly. You see the Funkos. You That's see the right. Funkos. Basically all Marvel. And then I got my Mickey Mouses. You see that gold one right there. I won that two years ago in our Oscar contest. I just, <laughs> I still like to put that out there. You that, still like that? That I won. Actually, oh, okay. I didn't win. I am a, <laughs> I accepted that on Little Cam's behalf. Uh, That's basically. true. That's uh, true. But you won last year. I so did win. Fine. See, I should have brought out, I have a golden Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, uh, you know. 
Yeah. I didn't accept it, like, for it. No. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to thank my parents. But no, right. oh my goodness. No, uh, I just took it. I yeah. just took it and ran. Exactly. I kicked ass this year on that. I'm like, man. Oh, all my right. goodness. Back to Marvel. Yes, yeah, Marvel Phase 4 with all the coronavirus pandemic shit that is happening. Of course, they had to bump some stuff on the release schedule they had to find new dates and we got those for you yeah and th- it's crazy because you not just this year remember phase four is spread out so yeah. these, this change of dates is for the like next three years exactly they pushed all these things back so uh yeah black widow of course obviously everybody has heard that is going to kick off phase four right yeah. black widow the solo film um that has been we should have already been watching it we should have already yeah. been kicking ass Woo! i know no November 6th. Yeah. Got to wait all the way almost that damn sucks, well to the man. end of the year before we're going to see Black Widow kick some ass November 6th. I hate Corona. I know. I, I know. Hate corona. Except for the beer with the lime. Yeah, right. That's good Corona. That, that's it. That's good Corona. Um, what? The Eternals. That's yep. the one with Angelina Jolie. That's their next big space group, I guess, you know, uh, to go side by side with the Guardians of the Galaxy, I guess. Yeah. Um, February 12th, so next year. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 2021 is going to have uh, three, though. Four, possibly. Yeah. If Sony gets off their ass with this third installment of the Spider Man. That's right. Um, we got Shang-Chi, May 7th of 2021. Yep. Um, and then, like you said, Eternals, February 12th, 2021. Uh, the Untitled Spider Man 3 possibly july 16th of 2021 yeah. and dr strange 2 with november 5th of 2021 right now now let, let, let's pause there for a minute because they have not said anything about the marvel shows yeah. yet whether they're going to delay production whether they're going to well we know they've delayed production i mean uh delay the start dates yeah. for them um, Wanda and the Vision, uh, Wanda Vision has been almost done. It's almost complete. Same yeah. thing with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They've just got a few more things to shoot with that, but they have not said a word about whether they're going to push those premiere dates back. And the reason I bring that up and paused at um, Doctor Strange too, because Wanda Vision is supposed to play directly into. Doctor Strange 2. Yeah. All of these shows on Disney Plus, all the Marvel shows on Disney Plus, if you guys aren't familiar, and if not, what's wrong? What are you doing? Um, they're totally integrated now into Phase 4. The The movies and the shows will be seamlessly tied together. So with these delays in all the films, you can't, like, you know, if you decide to delay WandaVision until after... Doctor Strange 2, that would fuck everything up. Yeah. So my guess is is that we're still going to maybe – those were coming out towards the end of the year anyway. So hopefully that everything is good to go there. But just keep that in mind. Every time we like talk about these delayed dates or something, keep that in mind. And if you don't have Disney+, Plus, you should get it because these shows – you're going to miss some shit with the movies if you don't watch the shows. Exactly. That's exactly. all I'm saying. But yeah, those two are like hand in hand, basically, yeah. Doctor Strange 2. Because uh, Wanda plays a huge role in Doctor Strange 2, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. That's what we've heard. Yep, yep. And so. uh, and apparently could be kicking off a new group dun, dun, dun. in Doctor Strange 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, w- well, we're here and could be Doctor Strange 2 or Ant-Man 3. Yeah. One of those films is going to kick off a new group. You guys have any idea what we're talking about? Give you a clue. It's Avengers Young. That's right. Young, young Avengers. Young Avengers. Young <laughs> Avengers. There it is. No clue. That's just it. Young <laughs> yeah, Avengers. Exactly. So, you know, because what we're, we've been talking about, Wanda, Vision, you know, Wanda and Vision are going to have their kids yep. who are part of the Young Avengers. We already know Ant-Man. He's got Cassie. Yep. Cassie Lang, part of the Young Avengers. Um, Stinger. And we know Kate Bishop. Is being introduced in Hawkeye. Yep. Kate Bishop is Hawkeye yep. in the Young Avengers. <laughs> um, it seems pretty good, pretty good that it's going to be Young Avengers. Yeah. We just don't know which movie's going to like highlight yeah, them or introduce, introduce them. them so. Like so, yeah, and it's going to be interesting too because we how we think they're going to introduce Fantastic Four if they're they're also doing it with mm-hmm. the Young Avengers, like introducing all these key players in the different movies that are already popular. So, Which will be extremely exciting because the the I am hearing over and over and over again that one of the key players in the new script that's being toyed with is Frankie, mm. Franklin Richards. Yeah. That guy him, right there. Him up there. The most powerful being in the MCU. Mm. I know you think it's Captain Marvel. But when Frankie arrives, 
this man can do anything he wants. Yeah. So, and I'm I'm assuming that if they introduce him in the Fantastic Four, he would also be a part of the Young Avengers. Yeah. Just saying. I don't know. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. But then we also got uh, Thor 4 yeah. for February 18th, 2020. Love and Thunder. We got, uh, <laughs> we got yeah, you're Black right. Panther 2 with May 8th, uh, yes. 2022. Yep. And Captain Marvel 2 with July 8th, uh, 2022 as well. Um, uh, do we have any specific names for these yet? Do we know any specific no. names or plot lines or anything like that? No, but I, Captain Marvel 2 I'm really curious about because we know they are indeed introducing a grown-up Rambo yeah. in um, WandaVision. Yeah. So she's going to play a part in that. So we're going to see Akira Akbar. I know, right? She's going to be a grown-up. Yeah. She's going to grow up. And she takes over the role as Captain Marvel. So I don't know if that's going to be introduced in Captain Marvel 2, if they're both going to coincide as Captain Marvel. Does Captain Marvel become binary? Like, we don't know. Yeah. I, I just, that's, but Kevin Feige knows. So many questions. <laughs> Kevin Feige knows. Kevin, hit us up. Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on the show and talk about it. Yeah. We promise we won't tell anybody. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. But exciting things happening at Disney Plus as well. Some huge numbers. It hits 50 million paid subscribers globally within five months of yeah. its U.S. launch date. Yeah. And they're calling this a huge milestone. I mean, just in, back in February, they had 29 subscribers, meaning... No, 29 million. 29 million <laughs> subscribers, not just 29. No, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> meaning that they it ramped up 75% since then. Yeah, and I mean, when you're really looking at it, I mean, you break down the numbers for, I mean, simple math, if you have 50 million, five months, there, I mean, 10 million subscribers a month, bro. It's insane. That is insane. Yeah. yeah. You know, they thought that first 10 million was maybe because they were giving it away free or whatever. But right. no, because they're maintaining that quota every month. Exactly. So. I mean, we talk about it for the past couple of weeks that it's due to the quarantine, it probably helps that, those numbers a lot. Oh, yeah. Without so, doubt. Without doubt. And um, I mean, plus... Um, uh, in February, or by 2024, they think it's going to be around 60 to 90 million worldwide subscribers. So that's that's huge. That's yeah. a lot of people. That is a lot of people. That is significantly gaining ground on Netflix. Yeah. And now they're saying, based on the on the movement, like you just said, 75 percent just since February, a 75 percent increase. That number might be conservative yeah. it might be even higher than 60 to 90 million yeah. maybe they crack 100 million by 2024 That'd be freaking wild. that would be crazy yeah <laughs> um, but i mean uh, like we said we talk about this all the time in our opinion the mouse house and and you know the bugs bunny man warner media that's the two yeah they've got all the content i have no doubt that when hbo max officially launches they're gonna see similar numbers For i don't sure. think as big as disney yeah but close because they too have 100 years of content exactly so i mean it's not surprising you know yeah man it's super wild but other things happening at disney plus i, I it's, know it's a little weird it's a little weird i'm gonna say uh disney plus is developing a reboot of a former abc dramedy Ready, guys? Doogie Howser. No. Yeah. No. It's happening. <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. Man, it's got to be. I, I, first <laughs> of ahead, all, unless Neil Patrick Harris is involved, unless he is on it, absolutely not. Stop. Throw it out. <laughs> drop it. Cancel it. Don't do it. Uh, Even if Neil Patrick Harris is involved, I don't think you should do it. Yeah. But if you are going to do it, are you paying attention, Bob Chappick? Anybody, anybody, don't do it. But if you're going to do it, Neil Patrick Harris has to be involved. Somehow. Somehow. Somehow because yeah, it's going to center around a teenage girl this time. Yeah. And, and she's yeah. going to be of uh, Asian descent. Yeah, so. Doogie Keola, yeah. MD. Yeah. Kealoa? Kealoa. Doogie Kealoa. Yeah. But your passion about this is my passion about don't remake the Home Alone reboot. But it's right. fucking happening. But it's happening. Yeah. I mean, like, like, Doogie Howser is iconic. It's like one of those iconic childhood roles that you just don't touch. Yeah. And I just, you know, yeah. what does Neil think? Neil, uh, yeah, right. Neil, come on the show, man. And he's got to, like, guest star. He like, has mentor to. Mentor or some shit. Like, Something has to happen yeah. for this to be somewhat okay with the mouth. 
Uh, it has to. <laughs> Even if it's a one episode just guest shot yeah. where he says, you know, I was in your position when I was a kid. You right. Know, it's a, you know, uh, something like that. Uh, you know, just, but if he doesn't, I'm just, I'm not on board with this. <laughs> I was around for the original yeah. Doogie, okay? I was a huge fan of the original Doogie. Is Max Casella coming back? Is Vinny coming back? No one knows. Is she going to have a Vinny? <laughs> like, I. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I just – those characters were so good. I just mm. – <laughs> Oh, my All right. Goodness. Okay. All right. Are you good? You yeah, good? I'm good. Okay. Good. Just making sure. <laughs> um, Freeform, things happening in Freeform. Tom Ashim, who is the president of Freeform, mm. is stepping down of the Disney-owned cable network this summer because he's going to get an executive role at Warner Brothers. Yes. If we're talking about it. It's these two battling because they are the biggies. They're the ones that have been around for the most time, basically, that are still as successful as they are. Absolutely. And he's going over there to be the president of Global Kids, Young Adults, and Classics. He's going to run all of their children, family fun programming, and he's also going to lead Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, Boomerang, and, of course, the Turner Classic Movies channel. Right. Now, so. this makes total sense because for anybody who's old like me, Freeform used to be ABC Family. Yeah. Family. It was heavily driven towards the type of programming that this guy is classic yeah. for. So to go over there and take over the young adult programming and the and the you know the cartoon programming over at Warner Media makes total sense. This is a good cherry pick from Disney. For sure, for sure. And I mean, we just talked about last week uh, the president of Hulu going over yeah. there and I mean maybe that he had some he had an arm in this. I think. Like- I think. I think that's heavily playing into it because that guy left Hulu. Okay, because when Disney bought into it, yeah. I think he eventually saw that Disney was going to take full control of it. He kind of butted heads about what direction they wanted to go in. So he. So he. He left. Yeah. And now he's heading up Hulu. You know, and it, so I mean, not Hulu. Um. Yeah, Hulu. Right. Yeah, he went over to Warner. Yeah, Brothers. Warner Media. Warner Media. It's quarantine, man. Yeah, quarantine. He's, he's the over at Warner Media. Media. <laughs> right, he's the head of Warner Media. Left so Hulu. It only left Hulu. It only makes sense that he's now cherry picking Disney employees because yeah. he had a beef with Disney. Exactly. I mean, you know, alleged. Alleged. We, we don't know that yeah. for sure. That's our theory, though. But um, Probably. so it makes sense. This is a good, uh, you know, and and Turner Classic Movies. Yeah. I mean, come on. This guy, he's going to be in charge of a lot. Yeah. Uh, All right. More power to him, man. See what happens. I really want to see what he does with Cartoon Network and Boomerang and yeah. stuff. I mean, I miss Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. Wouldn't you love just Warner Media to be like, let's bring back Saturday morning cartoons? Right. Just I mean, that would be epic. Somewhere. Somebody needs to do that. Yeah, yeah I mean, because uh, Little Cam and I were looking on our Roku app. If you don't have Roku, get a Roku. Like, totally. It's amazing. Um, but they have a Boomerang app that you can watch all those old cartoons. So, I, I mean, <laughs> Saturday morning cartoons is when streaming cartoons. Like, yeah. Basically. I mean, I get a little piece of it. I mean, with, if you got Disney Plus, you can watch Spider-Man and his amazing yeah. friends, the Incredible Hulk. Like X-Men. And like, yeah, X-Men and stuff like that. And if you've... Um, Got DC Universe. You can watch uh, all the Super Friends. Yeah, uh, you know, and uh, so I get a little nostalgic piece of it if you got those stream. But I just want to sit down with my bowl of cereal <laughs> and my glass of orange juice or my coffee now because I'm old exactly. and just kick back with my feet up on Saturday morning and watch me some cartoons. Hell yeah, man! That would be epic. Somebody do that, man. Definitely, definitely. Now this is <laughs> uh, everybody's jumping on this Tiger King bandwagon, guys. Fox is the latest to do it. Yes. Uh, they are going to do a quickie special from uh, TMZ developed subject uh, of the Netflix docu-series. This is going to be an hour-long special that was produced by TMZ but going to air on Fox. It's going to be titled TMZ Investigates Tiger King. What really went down? Now, this is going to follow, like, basically any any questions you had about the docu-series, they say they're going to answer, so... We'll know. see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, TMZ is one of those things for me. Like, I, I just, I like TMZ and then I hate TMZ. I know. I feel like sometimes they just overstep. Very back and forth. Uh, yeah, overstep the boundaries and, you know, cross some lines yeah. and just like, so, 
this will be interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it says the special will explore the questions left unanswered by the Netflix breakout docuseries, including whether the lead figure, Joe Exotic, it was really guilty in that murder to hire plot when he was convicted. And it's also going to touch on the disappearance of Carol Baskin's former husband, which we talked about. They really opened that investigation. And yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, don't, I just think this needs to die out it needs to <laughs> die out how how ridiculously insane is this whole thing getting this whole you know show this docuseries and everything during the coronavirus update the president is behind the podium yeah and a question literally was asked to him if he would pardon joe exotic during and, the coronavirus and he like, said he'll look at yeah it. he said he would <laughs> look at fuck? it it's like why are we even asking this question during that briefing like, that's where this show has gone. Yeah. I mean, that's where it's at right now. I agree with you. I think it it's like a train wreck. You can't help but watch it yeah. when you watch it. It's entertaining and everything, but enough's enough, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, and I mean, a little bit more to that. We were going to talk about it a little bit later, but I might as well bring it up now with Tiger King. Um, there, There's a rumor going around. I asked Netflix on Twitter, but no one confirmed. And I haven't seen Netflix post anything about it if there is actually going to be another episode. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. It yeah. came from... Uh, Joe Exotic's like owner of his zoo right. when he got in financial trouble. This guy came in and take over. Jeff something. Uh, Jeff is saying that there's going to be another episode on Netflix of Tiger King, but yeah, I don't know. Apparently, I don't said, know. I think they're yeah. trying to build up publicity. I think. I think so too. Because I mean, according to him, the camera crew was supposed to be there the next day after he posted that thing yeah. or whatever, and they were supposed to film it. So I haven't seen it. No. I mean, yeah, so no, yeah, Netflix has yet to confirm or deny. Don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. And someone else said that this fucking documentary series is getting Stranger Things numbers. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. I it know. is crazy. I, I mean, know. it's like, but it's crazy in a bad way, in not a, bad a good way. way. I just, mm. yeah, it's original though. Yeah. You know, to, to Ted and Reed's credit, it's original. Yeah. So, you know, good for you guys. Good for you guys. Uh, fucking crazy. But anyway, back to uh, Time Warner, AT&T, all that good shit. <laughs> Get this, guys. AT&T said on Tuesday that it's going to take out a $5.5 billion, that's with a B, uh, loan agreement at competitive rates with 12 different banks to uh, prove to Wall Street that they will be financially okay throughout this pandemic. Right. What? <laughs> right. And, and what I like is that they're they're claiming they have a strong cash position already. Yeah. And this is just going to add some flexibility yeah. to it. Like, what? if you have a strong cash position already, why are you borrowing another five and a half billion exactly. dollars? Um, I, I don't know, man. It just. Uh, I, know. I know. I don't. I don't think it's gonna be good. I mean, this is the AT and T is the latest biggest media company to flesh out its cash cautions over ahead of the economic economic crisis and uh, risk unknown because of the pandemic. But I, yeah, I just I don't know, man. I just that sounds like you are worried. So. I sell your stock. Yeah, I mean, it, okay. Uh, you know, apparently, some of this money is going to be used to like uh, help the employees who aren't getting right. paid right now and stuff like that. But I mean, five and a half billion. Yeah. L- I just I don't even know if that's like you know. No, no. I mean, they they are doing some shady stuff. I mean, they're also doing some shady stuff with HBO. That's uh, true. There was this huge headline over this past week that was like HBO is now free a whole year. For new AT and T and Direct TV subscribers, uh, the great pandemic content giveaway um, of 2020 continues. And get this, guys. Here's the catch: you have to sign a contract for two years yeah. to get yeah. this whole year of HBO for free. Like bullshit. And then after those two years, that's when your rates go up. It's like, no, this is fucking stupid. Like you're trying to jit people out of their money, and you're trying to be smart about it when. They can just add on HBO for like the extra twelve bucks. Yeah, or I mean, you know, and I, and I feel like, do you need HBO if you're going to get HBO Max? Yeah, exactly. Because I feel like a lot of the same content is going to be on them. Exactly. You know? So well, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, prove that you're not fan- 
financially in trouble, why are you doing shady shit like this? Right, like, right. Why are you trying to lock people down to a two-year contract that guarantees you an increase in, in pay? I mean, that just doesn't seem right. No, it does not. It does not. But, I mean, they are doing exciting things with uh, Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers Pictures. They inked an overall deal with Plan B, which is Brad Pitt's production company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's set to be their global distributor. Anywhere and everywhere you see a Brad Pitt movie like uh, The Departed, Assassination of Jesse James, um, If Bill Street Could Talk. All of those came from Plan B. Yeah. And those are now fall under the Warner Brothers banner. Yeah. So, that, which is awesome. Yeah, More that's content. Epic. Loading up the content for exactly. HBO Max. And I think that's what it is. They're, it's for HBO Max. Yeah, definite. I mean, so it makes sense because, like we said, you going to have to compete with the Mouse House. Exactly. So. That's what it is. That's what it is. Mm. So this next one, I mean – not I'm a, really happy about this next one. Yeah. I'm super stoked about this one. If I can be super stoked about this if one. If you can. Yeah. You guys know Superman uh, from Supergirl on the, on the CW, it, they're getting his own show with Lois, Superman and Lois. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, not, not a huge fan of that version of Superman and Lois. I'm just going to say it. I like Tyler Hoshin. I think he's, you know, and I love Supergirl and Melissa Benoist and the ver- Just not a huge fan of that interpretation. So I was not overly thrilled to hear that they were getting a spinoff. Yeah. Um, eh, you know, and I'm not overly thrilled to hear about that because we still have not heard if green arrow and the canaries are going to be picked up yeah you know i guess we're gonna have to wait until may at the upfronts to to know about that i would much rather that than superman and lois yeah i'm just gonna say it i think they're gonna try to recreate the magic of lois and clark back in the day it's not gonna happen no because you don't have terry hatcher it just say it is, guys. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, it. but they do have Emmanuel Shariki. Yeah, remember her from Entourage? Yeah, yeah, you know Eric's Eric's baby mama. Uh-huh. Yeah, she is gonna be playing Lana Lang, and I am super stoked about that because they they seem to be building a really solid cast around Superman and Lois. Yeah, so that makes me happy. But um, I love her. I think she's a fantastic actress. Yeah, I think she's gonna bring a lot of grit and a lot of character to the role of Lana Lang. So that's gonna be. I, I'm happy about. That one. Yeah, and they also cast her husband, who is Eric Valdez, as yes. her husband. Eric was also featured on in Graceland, General Hospital, New Girl, Gilmore Girls, The OC, and more. So, I mean, like you said, solid cast around the main cast. I mean, I'm going to have to watch it to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, the fact that they're introducing the husband with Lana Lang, though, so, I mean, that's interesting because – He's, you know, spent his whole life in Smallville. Yeah. He's a, he's a farm boy. He does not like the big city. And so, and he especially doesn't like all the hype and attention that Superman gets in the big city. And, yeah. you know, now that Lana's in Metropolis. So that is going to be interesting to play out to see how that goes back and forth. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it sounds like it could be interesting. But Yeah. I mean, we shall see, man. We shall see. But uh, going back to Netflix, oh, man, they kept this one under wraps. They like, did. Because... This show has been shooting. We talked about it like a while what, ago. At least a year ago, Yeah, right? we were like, like still in the South, still in Biloxi when we announced <laughs> we this. Were. Like uh, Lisa Kudrow, remember Space Force? Well, Lisa Kudrow is going to join Steve Carell in Space Force. The yes. streamer also revealed Wednesday that the show is one of the most anticipated shows of 2020, and it's going to premiere May 29th. Yes. I cannot wait for this. I'm thrilled to see him come back to TV yeah. uh, and Space Force. Yes. I mean, come on. And and they're going with it because they're, you saw they're in the – if you saw the pictures that were you know put up online, the publicity, they're in the Air Force yeah. looking uniforms, which yeah. Space Force is part of the Air Force. Um, I wonder if they're going to have the Star Trek knockoff logo right. that Trump yeah. made, right? Because yeah. we all know this is a this is a, a – you know, a pun version yeah. of Space Force that Very was created sure. by Trump. So, um, but yeah, Lisa Kudrow, I mean, come on. Epic. Uh, Steve Carell and Lisa Kudrow? I know. He's just trying to work with all the friends. I mean, it's The true. Morning Show on Apple with uh, Jennifer Aniston yep. and now freaking Lisa Kudrow on Space Force. Like, I don't blame him. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, and this is going to be like a. Uh, like a workplace comedy, like The Office or stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah. The funny thing is, is that it, the idea was actually thought about and like, let's run with this. When Trump announced 
that they were going to create Space Force. Yeah. I think they ran with it and like, there's no way this idiot's going to create yeah. Space Force. Let's do. And then he did <laughs> create an actual Space and Force. Like, okay. So, oh, all right. Well, this is going to be even better then. Right? So, you know. It's so it's, funny. I can't I, wait for it. Though. I know. It's definitely going to be one of those shows that's going to be binge worthy it seems oh yeah you know i'm definitely like man so many good ones coming you got space force and then raising dion season two and like all this good shit coming i know netflix is doing good things they are man netflix is doing good things now let's talk about the biggest app that broke this week the biggest streaming service the one we've been talking about for a while teasing a lot of its content yes quibi it finally released guys we have it not gonna lie yeah i had to check it out Uh, you get a 90 day free trial so i mean might as well um but it was downloaded 300,000 times in one day in U.S. and Canada, reaching the number three under the free apps in the app stores following TikTok and Zoom. And this freaking thing, I don't understand why this is literally in all the articles, which is just 7.5% of what Disney Plus's debut. Yeah, and here's my theory on that. You guys know Jeffrey Katzenberg is the mastermind behind Quibi. Yes. Right? Along with uh, Whitman um, from former uh, – now I can't remember. She ran for president way back in the day. Oh, she, shit. Yeah, you know, big corporate exec. So um, anyway, Katzenberg left Disney on not so good terms. Lawsuits back and forth. This was under Michael Eisner. Yeah, way and back, like 20 plus years. Katzenberg thought for sure he was going to be taking over for Eisner when that day came. And that was made clear to him that it was not going to happen. Yeah. So Katzenberg got out of there, sued. They sued back. There was big legal fights for a long time. Even after Iger came in, Shit. they were still kind of cleaning that up. But he left. He formed S, uh, DreamWorks, SKG, uh, G with uh, Geffen and Spielberg. K is Katzenberg. Um, and so I think it's that. I think he maybe he's still got a little beef um with disney and i think people are enjoying playing disney yeah. against him yeah. you know i would hope that's not the case after right. all this time like if that is the case move on yeah like um exactly but, and like i said at the beginning of the show i think it's wrong to even compare the two services it is it's not even on the same level exactly I mean, exactly quibi is something new it's something original that they are just trying out to see what's going to happen i love the the product honestly i mean short little increments of episodes like five to seven minute episodes while you're like cooking or while you're waiting on something like especially if your girlfriend's getting ready you got a little episode you can watch (laughs) i'm not gonna lie i use it a lot for that reason and it's strictly mobile yeah like it's not trying to compete with disney on 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 a platform of streaming or you know it's strictly mobile streaming entertainment exactly and so uh, yeah i think the comparison is ridiculous yeah if you're waiting at the dmv quibi is perfect for you and and exactly and by the way guys i mean half the content hasn't even launched on there exactly like you you know you got a bunch of stuff still coming so wait until all that hits and te- then let's look at the subscribers right? agreed agreed and i mean other things happening for big streaming service especially on youtube uh, youtube is recognizing this pandemic that's going on and recognizing that everybody's subscribers are going up on each streaming service so sure. youtube originals is raising the paywall on several of its original series while the people are sheltering at home during this crisis uh, among the shows that will be available for a limited time starting this week uh before this episode airs uh are part of YouTube's Stay at Home Initiative and Step Up, High Water, Seasons 1 and 2, mm-hmm. Me and My Grandma, Impulse, Season 1 and 2, Foursome, uh, Season 1 and 2, Escape the Night, uh, Seasons 1 through 4, Sideswiped, uh, Matt Pat's Game Lab, uh, Overthinking with Jane and June. I mean, they have a lot of shows yeah. that they're going to be offering. I didn't even know they had this many shows. I didn't either. Um, but one that I'm kind of sad they didn't, uh, raise the paywall for us, Cobra Kai. Yeah, which is, in my opinion, their best show. Yeah. Uh, by far. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we should be seeing the new season of that coming soon, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and Elizabeth Shue is rumored to be making a little appearance on there. We're yeah. finally going to find out what happened there. And uh, so that's cool, though. Hopefully Definitely. they rethink that and add Cobra Kai to the list. I would hope so, man. I would hope so. And <laughs> let's talk about how much Stars loves 50 Cent. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. 50 Cent greenlit another project of his yeah black mafia family 
and he's going to executive produce along with uh, Randy Huggins. Of course. Who's going to serve as the writer. Black Mafia Family is inspired by the true story of uh, two brothers who rose from the decaying streets of Southwest Detroit Y'all. in the late 80s and gave birth to one of the most influential crime families in the country. Yeah. So um, uh, That's exciting, man. Especially like period pieces. Yeah. Like going back in the 80s. You'll probably like it because you're a huge 80s fan. Absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I'm truly excited. He said that he wants their story to be told because they're legends they actually um intertwined with the hip-hop like community yeah so they did a lot of like money laundering and shit like that with the hip-hop community so i'm guessing that he met them personally but i mean who knows man i mean there's gonna be a lot of stuff that is going to be similar to power, I feel like. But yeah. it, it looks good. It uh, sounds look, good. Look, I'm going to definitely check it out because I'm a huge fan. Uh, we talked about this last week a little bit, but uh, For Life. Yeah. You know, he's also executive producing that show for uh, ABC. Also a true, based on a true life story. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where he, he seems to be grabbing really great content. You know, and putting it out there, and, and, and you know, I love when they tell original stories, like, like of what you know, real life stories. Um, and by the way, I'm just going to throw this out there: if like you know, Disney ever decides to like not stick with For Life, which they'd be stupid not to, but yeah. if they don't, I predict stars would pick it right up. Oh yeah, for it's sure. It's a brilliant show, man. For so sure. Go Fifty Cent, man. Yeah, rock and roll. Uh, Curtis Jackson. Proud of you. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, this next one is by no surprise. I'm surprised not a lot of uh, anticipated movies haven't done this yet already. Um, Netflix uh, picked up Lovebirds. We saw right, that. That's right. going to be on Netflix. But My Spy, that Dave Batista comedy, is now going to Amazon Studios, STX's once theater-bound action comedy, My Spy, uh, is going to hit – it was supposed to hit domestically – uh, April 17th, yeah. but now it has not. It hit overseas and in like Canada and stuff and raised around like 4 million. But I mean, with everything being shut down, it makes sense for it to go to a streamer. Oh. And Amazon's smart for picking it up. Yeah. And in my opinion, this. I think this movie's better fitted for a streamer. Yeah. I, I mean, not nothing against Batista or anything. I mean, you know, but this type of movie usually does really well on yeah. streaming services. Yeah, so. and I mean, all their marketing has already been done on TVs, if not yeah. more than other streaming services' original movies. So this is really smart on their part to pick up this one because Agreed. the trailer looks hilarious. So I it think does. it's going to be a very family fun film. And I mean, it is definitely the time to be spending time with your family. It is definitely time <laughs> to be doing that. It is also definitely time to pay it forward. If you are in a Agreed. position to pay it forward. And we talk about this every week too. all the, all the celebrities, if you will use the term celebrity, but you know, all, they're just normal people too, you know, and if they're in a position that they, they help out Tyler Perry, one such man who, yes. who consistently always pays it forward and helps out. Yeah. You know, you, you, if you know this guy's history, you know, at one point he's living in a car station wagon, yeah. you know, and now he's like, boom, has this Huge. empire in Georgia. Yeah. So he, um, thousands of grocery shoppers during uh, senior hours in Atlanta and New Orleans, he surprised them this past Wednesday when he learned, uh, they went up, Tyler Perry picked up their tabs at all of the Kroger stores in Atlanta and the Winn-Dixie stores in New Orleans. Yeah. 29 different stores he stopped at and bought their food for them. Yeah. So. It's crazy. Yeah, that's that's a lot of food. Yeah. Uh, 29 different stores and no telling how much food these people had. He just seems like such a good guy. He does. Like. He does. This is a guy I've always felt like has never forgotten where he came from. Yeah. Or the or the struggle that he went through to get to the position that he's in now. And and you know he, he gives it back. Definitely. You know, and I think that's why he's so successful and is able to keep doing what he's doing. I agree. Man. Definitely. Definitely. So. And he's Nola Bourne from New Orleans. Yeah. So absolutely. I mean, it's awesome that he goes back to his home roots and pays it forward. So absolutely. I just wanted to end up the industry news with some positive news because that is just amazing. He continues to do this. We've had a few stories about him, like, paying it forward to a whole bunch of different, like, organizations and random people. So he rocks. It's true. He does. Um, But now it is time for our guest segment. We teased it at the beginning of the show. We got the one and only Kevin L. Johnson coming on the show to talk about Ozark. Kevin Bateman, or Jason Bateman, whatever his name is. Uh, there's a lot happening, man. Like you said earlier, quarantine has got us a little crazy. Uh, you know, we are the little It's okay. It's, it's all fine. Right. It's fine. But yes, uh, it was definitely a very informative information 
a filled interview for all the up and comers just Definitely. trying to get to that next step that next level that next big project and he definitely got it man he did and the underlying theme i think i took away from this interview and i think i hope you guys do too is that you never know what's going to happen yeah so don't think oh man i just blew that it's no, i can't do this or i can't do that or should i do this you right. never know just go for it keep going running chasing it because you ne- you never know what's going to happen that's that's the thing i hope everybody takes from this interview definitely definitely well here he is Kevin L. Johnson, welcome inside the Crazy Ant Farm, man. How you doing today? Doing well, man. Uh, just uh, quarantined up like everybody else. Right? <laughs> Trying to stay inside as much as possible. Do you have your gloves on and you're not touching any faces, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Not even my own. I haven't touched my face in weeks. Right. Just trying to figure out stuff to do. But we appreciate you taking time out of your day to come on inside the Crazy Ant Farm and get a little crazy with us. Oh, absolutely, man. Of course, of course. And uh, what we like to do at the beginning of uh, each interview segment, we like to introduce you to our listeners and uh, ask you how you got started in the industry. Was it something you always wanted to do? We saw that you were into the computer science. So I want to (laughs) know how you go from computer science to a theater actor to this kind of acting. How did you get started, man? Yeah, it started in college. Uh, Went in as a computer science major and yeah, just realized um, I like video games, but I, I felt like it was going to be pretty hard to actually make video games. Yeah, <laughs> you got to have a got to have a good grasp on uh, math. So I decided to switch majors, uh, became an English major, and then like one of the first things uh, or one of the big things that we had to do in one of my early English classes was go see a play uh-huh. and then write about it. And I had seen plays before in high school, but. It was just something different about getting to see it, you know, at a college. And uh, it was called uh, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Mm -hmm. And I just loved it. And I was like, man, I kind of want to I want to try that. So I I signed up for acting classes the next semester. And my first play that I auditioned for back in college was this was called The Heidi Chronicles. Uh I didn't get a part in it, but I did. I wanted to be like a part of the process. So Uh I was like, is there any way I can be? you know, on the show, but not in the show. And they're like, well, yeah, we need uh, people to work behind the scenes, like run tech. I was like, all right, that's cool. So I did that, got to learn that uh, that's its own kind of uh, play within itself. Right, um, a beast in know. itself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I got to meet uh, new people, make friends that I still have to this day. So that was, that was great to be a part of that. Um, and then I got my first uh, part, in the play uh, burial at Thebes, Uh. which was, uh, it was part musical. It was a big play of the, uh, of the semester. Uh And uh, I auditioned and I didn't know I could sing. So I was like, (laughs) I didn't know. (laughs) So I didn't, I didn't go out for one of the parts. This was singing part. Uh And I used the monologue from (laughs) Richard the third for Mm. my audition. Oh, wow. I know. Now is the winter of our discontent. Yeah. Um, And I got a role in that. I played, a I think it was Comical Guard. So that was my first play. Then the big musical, uh, I think it was the following semester, was You're in Town, um, which is it's literally what it sounds like. It's it's called You're in Town. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's all in the title. You had to pay to pee. Um, Oh. It was like, yeah, it was like a parody of... uh, of Les Mis. Okay. Um, and so I checked out the the music to You're in Town and tried to, you know, see if I could sing. And that's when I found out that I could sing. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I have this God-given no talent. Clue. I have no idea. <laughs> but my mom could sing. She was a country music singer uh, when she was younger. So oh, I have you. a little bit of, yeah, so I have that, like, twang. Uh, like, Garth Brooks is my my go-to when it comes to karaoke. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, friends in, lo- friends in low places. Um, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people hear me and they're like, what the hell? How did you say I didn't know that was coming out of his like mouth. What the hell? Right, completely um, random. That's hilarious. Yeah, then I, I graduated and uh, I stuck around Clemson, did some plays at the uh, Clemson Little Theater, and, and then I moved home. Um, a lot of my friends moved to either New York or Chicago Uh because that was like a big, like Chicago was a big uh, place that everybody was wanting to move. So that was the plan to move up North. And I realized I just didn't have the money to do it. Right. So luckily for me, when I moved back to, uh, South Carolina, well, when I moved back to Lake Wiley, where I grew up, Uh 
which is right near North Carolina, the film industry was just starting to boom. Like uh, Homeland was about to get started. Right, right. Like Hunger Game, like all that stuff was about to start happening. So I got back and eventually I moved to Charlotte and uh, started taking acting classes, got headshots done, submitted to some agencies, got turned down by some agencies. <laughs> That's part of the game, yeah. man, it seems like. <laughs> and then I got my first uh, agent, who I'm still with, my Southeast agent. Oh, nice. Uh, Artist Resource Agency in uh, Summersville, North Carolina. And then I booked uh, my first thing out the gate, which was like a North Carolina education lottery commercial. Oh, cool. It was during the American Idol kind of craze. Uh-huh. And, and one of the uh, commercials was people auditioning to be the next Powerball. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I come in and the whole idea is I'm a cube and I'm trying to be a Powerball. <laughs> so... It was funny because it was like when I did the when I was doing the audition, I was so green to it. It just it made perfect sense. It was like meta acting because I was literally going in for something which I'm I I was just new at, and I just had this like happy go lucky kind of you know <laughs> gleefully look on my face just and it just worked for the for what they were looking for, um, and I was super excited when I got it and I. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this is great. And it was like 500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that first 500. A, exactly. Yeah, which, which was amazing. I was like, oh, man, it can only get better from here. Um, <laughs> so, and all this stems, the, this entire career, you you, yeah. you finding out that you can act, you finding out that you can sing, right. that yeah, you, become the, <laughs> you become the Powerball, all because of math. That's what, I, that's, that's what I'm right, hearing. That's what I'm all, hearing. All, it, it all stemmed from disliking <laughs> math. That's fantastic. <laughs> Oh man! All kidding aside, though, what I what I really like though is is that you said you know like there wasn't a part available, but I got to be a part of this production, and you get behind the scenes with the tech stuff and everything. I think so many yeah. people that are trying to get into the industry are scared of that. Man, yeah, that they don't realize. Get on set, man. Be a painter. Be a you know build a build one of the props. Do, you know anything to get on set and be able to be a part of the experience to get yourself going, right? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with like you know uh, doing that and uh, just to get on set and see how you know the, what the process is. And I mean, yeah, uh, being a production assistant um, is a great way to kind of learn how uh, what goes on on set and. And you can kind of listen in, you can, especially if you're like an on-set PA. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can see what the director says and all the lingo and all the gaffers, the sound guys, like all that stuff. It's because uh, it's like a class within itself. Absolutely. So, okay, so you make the jump, right? You have most most of the experiences in theater, aside from the Powerball. Yeah. So, <laughs> you make the jump. You make the jump to film and television. Yeah. Uh, so many things going on right now in film and television. Do you have a medium that you prefer? Because uh, you know, obviously, with the huge success of Ozark, and uh, you know, but you've done some feature films as well. Is, is there uh-huh. a medium that you prefer one over the other, or what are your thoughts on that? If it's a good project then i'm open to tv or film uh i mean tv is is kind of is like the big thing right now yeah. like mm-hmm. stream, streaming uh is just it's completely changed the game um when it comes to you know uh, acting and everything it's just like netflix and amazon and hulu and uh, now apple and hbo max cbs yep. all access i mean all of them are 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 heading towards streaming. And I think why a lot of uh, the bigger actors do the streaming uh, services is because they seem to be more actor friendly and, uh-huh. and let them control like, all right, here's the money, go do your thing. We trust you. You know, that's why they're all like executive producers. Like you see, like for instance, Jason Bateman is an executive producer on Ozark, uh-huh. uh, Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Aniston. Um, you know, they're doing like, they're executive producing Apple shows and Hulu shows. It's just – and then writers. I mean writers have more free free reign to do right. uh, what they want on uh, the streaming because they're not – you know, there's not like a time limit that the show has to be and they don't have to stay within a certain box. Right. So, yeah, I mean it's uh, – and I think that's why a lot of uh, the streaming shows are the ones when it comes award season, you know, those are the shows that you see up for awards. Yeah, and I mean we we talk about it all the time, especially after Emmy season. It seems like 
all the network shows are kind of getting pushed to the side because of these streamers. I mean, Marvelous Miss Maisel and like Fleabag, yeah. they're all like taking all these awards. It's super crazy. I feel like down the line that there's no, there's not going to be any network TV shows anymore. It's going to be strictly streaming, or at least in my opinion. Well, and I think he nailed it though. I think the reason is because exactly what you said, creative freedom. Yeah. You know, it's not like back in the old days where you got the studio guy and he's got to watch the dailies and he's like, this is good. This is, you know, you have like that liberty to just, like you said, here's the money, go do what you're going to do. And that's got to mm-hmm. be refreshing. I think, uh, I think cable is going to, I mean, I think they're already kind of realizing it Yeah. With, because CBS all access, mm-hmm. but again, that's, that's streaming. Like they, um, and maybe it's just because they can't give too much freedom to writers because they have, you know, it's, they have, they can't do like TV mature. Right. On, right. You can't drop the F bomb on like Fox and NBC, CBS. You can on USA though. I mean, I've watched the center yep, and that, yep. they dropped the F bomb on there and FX. Um, so I don't know, maybe CBS, ABC, Fox, I mean, they're very, they're a lot, they're family friendly. Yeah. You know? uh, this is us. I love this is us. I yes. can't oh, yeah. I love this is us. Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, the, there's there's a few shows now that that are family friendly that are kind of finding their their groove, if you will. Uh, you know, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, This Is Us, Council of Dads, shows like that that I guess are connecting with the family. I think there's still a place for yeah. it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't watched Council of Dads. I've got a buddy who was in the final episode that they shot of this of the first season. Is it like a um? Because I know you had one of the the main guys on the show. I saw that. Yeah, uh, yeah, Michael O'Neill is um. It's it's kind of like This Is Us, right? Yeah. At least from the trailer, I feel like has that kind of feel. Yeah, very family dynamic, and it kind of tells the story from the point of view of these of these three guys and, and you know the widow. So very much along those lines, yeah. But uh, I mean. With all of these things that you've been in, what which state have you shot the most in? I we see that you've been in Atlanta a lot because Dustin here is a huge fan of The Resident and love yes. your story arc on that episode. <laughs> <laughs> but my um, story arc on that yeah, episode. that one, yes, that, that one episode. <laughs> You'd be surprised, man. It's like an ever growing list of people that have been on that show, man. It's amazing. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I feel like Hollywood South, I mean, it used to be New Orleans, but now it's turning more into Atlanta. I mean, is that the place where you go to the most to to shoot stuff? Well, I'm I'm based out of Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. um, I think most of the stuff shoots here. Yeah. Uh, I like to say, you know, I'm exaggerating, but anything that you see on TV, like one out of three are shot (laughs) in Georgia. I'm not like even sure. Here. I'm not even sure that's an exaggeration a- anymore. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's just you know we talked to Bradley Gallo a couple of weeks ago ju- about that exact yeah. thing. They may all go through L.A. because that's where the decisions are made, but they're shooting everywhere. But and Georgia is just slaying it right now. Yeah, I love Bradley. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't seen him since we did Care for What You Wish for, but yeah, he's they got some good stuff happening. Yeah, and he seems like such an epic guy to have on set because he talked about it in his interview that we had with him that he continues to like carry on the relationship, a really personable guy, but also the executive suit that likes to get stuff done. So yeah, I I love that uh, interaction that you posted on Twitter that uh, you had with him. So I I love oh, yeah. that. Uh, everything's all connected really that's what it seems like yeah yeah they were uh he was really happy when i i told him i booked ozark uh back when we started shooting season one and he was happy for me uh i've come a long way from a like powerball guy to, right <laughs> you know, it's, it's still a, it's still a grind don't get me wrong definitely but yeah it's it's uh it's definitely been worth it yeah because i mean it's like you said definitely a grind um a lot of guests come on the show and talk about social media and how that impacts their career what about yourself how does that impact your career is it something that's vital for an actor to have at the moment or is it just kind of like your own self-promotional tool um i think it's i think it's good to have a nice social media presence Mm -hmm. like it took it took me a while to get verified on twitter uh but um yeah i mean i also think it's great to stay in touch with the fans Mm -hmm. um because without the fans there would be no ozark so yeah um and i think not all producers look at the you know the whole followers list but i think it comes into play sometimes when it comes to the bigger roles you know yeah like definitely a, like a built-in audience mm-hmm. um like an unwritten rule kind of thing uh like it's something that they definitely look at i'm sure when it comes to casting yeah 
episode. Well, let's talk about the biggie, Ozark. You brought it up. So, I, I mean, yeah. yeah. What's it like working with Jason Bateman and that crew and that and that cast? It's a phenomenal cast, man. And, and it just the show is groundbreaking, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. it, you know, the, what they've been able to do with it over the three seasons is just incredible. Yeah. Did you guys have you guys already seen season three? Oh, uh, we have started it. Right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've only watched the first episode. No spoilers. Oh, oh, okay. I got some good stuff on the back end so i don't want to spoil it for you all right, um, all right. <laughs> yeah my, my storyline is like the second half but yeah man it's uh it's been great uh like i remember the table read uh for season one um it was amazing getting to meet like jason and laura and uh and julia and Ju- and this i like took her career to the another level oh um, yeah great role of ruth um and everybody is just really down to earth awesome people like when i'm when i met jason at the table read was that was the first time i'd seen him uh you know in person and he was he was so cool so nice he was he was like we got your dog for the first uh for our first scene um from the infamous scene where like wendy comes to the real estate office in season one right and he's like yeah we're trying to figure out what dog we're gonna get you i think we're gonna go with a uh a little uh, pomeranian or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> and then laura was awesome uh such a sweetheart i stay in touch with her during the year uh-huh. um just yeah got to see her on broadway after we shot season one um so yeah it's 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 been great man it's uh what's amazing is i like when I did the audition, uh, it was a taped audition, like most of them are now. Uh-huh. And I felt really good about it, sent it in. And um, my manager that I had at the time, I asked her, I was like, anything about, uh, you know, that, that audition for that role on that sh- on Ozark, that new show? Um, and she was like, yeah, I found out that they're going to go with somebody older. And I was like, all right, well, it is what it is. Right. Uh, so I just kind of let it go. After that, there was nothing I could do about it. Um, and then I was driving home, or I was driving back to Charlotte for a callback for a short film. And my uh, my Southeast agent called me, and he was like, hey, they want to book you for Ozark. And I was like, what? <laughs> I just I, They said they were going to go with somebody older. And he goes, well, I don't know what to tell you, man. It looks like they want to book you. That's right. <laughs> like, ba- All right Bateman that's stepped in. Bateman yeah, exactly. said, no, no, we're going with him. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? Like, I mean, you just never know how those things go. Maybe somebody... Uh, wasn't able to do it because of scheduling conflicts Uh and it just worked out for me and it's uh and it changed my life well i mean we're huge believers in everything happens for a reason i mean that's just like it with us we originally came from uh, biloxi mississippi and now out in los angeles and going back and forth to charlotte actually because we got some family that we visit often and shooting some stuff in atlanta like we could yeah man yeah man so maybe we'll have to meet up one day in charlotte definite yeah charlotte's cool i mean i like I thought Charlotte was big, and then I moved to Atlanta. I was like, "Oh man, <laughs> <Yeah>, shit!" <laughs> yeah. Atl- Atlanta's a little rough, ain't it? With the traffic, man. Oof. Yeah. Did, um, do you guys go to like when you go to Charlotte? Do you go to Noda? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, that's a hot. That's one of my spots that I love to go to. Yeah, freaking uh, Smelly Cat, that coffee house. That's <laughs> yeah. freaking. That's my shit. Hell I love yeah, that man. one. <laughs> or what about um, Jack Beagles? Yes, yes, yes. Oh man, they're they're big, like two pound. It was just a huge burger they have. Yeah. Oh, so good. See, now this is a man who clearly knows how to have fun and where to go. Exactly. You know, it's, it's definite. <laughs> so funny. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, how's life been during all this quarantine stuff? But, uh, it's just a lot of uh, a lot of watching TV. Like I, I binge watch Better Call Saul. Now I'm watching Arrested Development, which <laughs> don't tell Jason if you ever see him. Like <laughs> I just now got into it. <laughs> no so, shit. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just now getting into it, and it's a hilarious show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Do you still send in auditions, or, like, what's that like? Uh, well, everything's kind of dried up right now. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I stay in contact uh, with my manager out in L.A. Um, I had an audition for a uh, – my first ever audition for a video game. That was oh, cool. Oh, that is cool. Um, and also, I mean, if you ever uh, try animation, I guess, because I'm that that industry is continuing to roll on. Like Family Guy, Simpsons, all those are still continuing to move forward. I mean, that's something we really look into as well, because we like to dabble a little bit in the acting game. So, I mean, yeah, okay. aud- auditions for um, the animation series, I feel like that would be a good fit as well, because you got a really, like, defined voice. Like, I you feel like, like, if somebody... Oh, 
you. No, not a problem. Like somebody could be able to recognize you from your voice. Well, I did have an audition uh, early last year, I think. I don't even I don't think it's out yet at all. But um, the whole concept was. I was auditioning for like uh, the main uh, voice mm -hmm. of like the deep state kind of deal. Like mm. it was oh, kinda, okay, yeah. So he worked at like um, like, in a, like in a government office. Uh -huh. and yeah, had this Family Guy kind of American Dad kind of feel to it. Yeah, uh, and I had one of the parts of the audition was I had to come up with a rap. Oh shit! <laughs> <And> I, <was laughs> pretty, I actually it took me a little while to actually it wasn't it wasn't like freestyle rap. Yeah, because I ain't that good. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> But I actually was pretty pleased with that part of the audition. I, I thought that was going to be horrible. And I was like, man, that's not that bad. It's pretty funny. That's great. Um, <laughs> Please so tell yeah, me that's on a demo reel somewhere right, so we like... can watch that. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's on my new phone that I have or it was on my – I still have my old phone. I could send it to you guys. If that I would be epic. Oh, definite, man. That would be so I, was pretty I was pretty pleased with it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he does. You know, you bring up a good point that you do have that voice where I feel like the range you could play an older guy, a younger guy, you yeah. know, you kind of you'd, you'd kick ass in voiceovers, dude. Okay, cool. I, I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah that's what we're here for, man, <laughs> to give people new sure, ideas. But sure. uh, don't forget that that 10%. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, man. But uh, um, what we like to do at the end of each interview segment is have our guests come on and leave a little piece of advice for the up and coming actors and uh what pitfalls would you say to try to avoid in this huge mega entertainment industry as well um i know these probably get said all the time but i would just say you just you got to keep um you just got to keep pushing i mean it there's a book called uh, Outliers, uh -huh. uh, the whole 10,000 hour rule. You're not an actor until you've like worked 10,000 hours kind of deal. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so, yeah, just uh, you just got to keep pushing because there's definitely going to be rejection. Like if you book one out of every 20 auditions and that's not bad uh, because it's tough. Like right. any any booking is a blessing. And I would say, um, you know, take classes, uh, keep honing your craft. It's just like anything else. You know, it's just like working out. You're just working out a, your muscle, which is your will. So you're just uh, continuously working that out. Um, and I would say the pitfalls, you know, try to stay out of your own head. Uh, mm. I, I mean, I still do that. Uh, but I'm better at like being aware when it starts to happen uh -huh. than I used to be. So yeah, just when you do an audition, if you get one, just kind of let it go and get ready for the next one. Uh, like look at it. Like I think Brian Cranston says, um, I'm probably going to butcher this, but when you're auditioning, you're not at, you're not auditioning for a job. The audition is the job. Yes. Kinda have yeah. Kind of have that mentality. Uh -huh. And he said that changed the way he looked at it from then on out. So, uh, yeah, just uh, keep pushing. And if you want to be in this business, um, there's a place for you. Just got to you just got to work at it. Yeah, just got to find that niche, man. It's got to find that niche. But uh, thank you mm -hmm. again for coming on the podcast, man. I mean, it's been a fun conversation just to talk about your career because, I mean, it's all about making connections. And you're a hell of a guy, man. We really appreciate you. Oh, thanks, guys. And uh, once you get done with season three, uh, yeah, just uh, hit me up on uh, – Twitter, let me know what you think. Definitely. I think, uh, I think it, it's it's a wild ride, man. It's the best season yet, people say. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And you know, it's all about social media, so where can people follow you? Yeah, uh, so on Twitter, it's going to be Kevin underscore L underscore Johnson. And then on Instagram, it's going to be the Kevin L. Johnson. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, like we said, we appreciate you for taking your time out of your day today during your quarantine. And, um, <laughs> I know. I have, so, I have so many places to go right, right? now. <laughs> uh, that's why when I sent you the message, I was like, probably either of these days would really work since we're all <laughs> staying at home like shit. <laughs> but Hopefully you, this will all be over by like the end of April. I think that's what they're saying. I, so. I I really hope so, man. I really hope so because ready just to get outside and get some sun, right. to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, yeah, we appreciate you. We'll be in touch soon, and we'll definitely let you know what we think about Ozark Season 3. Thanks, guys. Great talking to you. Not a problem. Not a problem. You have a great rest of the day now. All right, bud. See ya.
Later. Man, that that was a good interview, especially like just an up and comer trying to keep going. Especially, I think this is his big break. Ozark is his big break onto bigger, better things. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, he's clearly got skill, and and I always enjoy hearing the stories about how it all comes together for yeah. people. That that's definitely one of the most roundabout odd tracks that I think for we've sure. heard from one of our guests as to how they started and how they ended up where they are now. But, for sure. But always cool to hear, man. Exactly. Exactly. He came a long way from a lottery boy. So <laughs> lottery boy. I love that whole premise, though. I, we, I, now I want to find that commercial. So I was a cube, and I was right? trying to be a ball. Like, that is so <laughs> fucking funny. Dude. Exactly, exactly. And if he sends us the rap, for that audition, we will be sure to put it at the very end of this episode. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> so, but thank you again, Kevin Johnson, for coming on the show. All right, before we get our top five segment on, because we got some good stuff going on there, there is some breaking news yes. because everybody knows we record on Thursday. So, breaking news on Thursday. Daredevil will be available to use in the MCU in November. Yes, yes. Netflix no longer has the rights. We've been talking about this for, well, two years. Yeah. That once it was canceled, there was like this two-year window before Marvel could get their hands back on the rights. And, well, Daredevil's up. Uh, Super excited, super excited. We were just talking about, like, (laughs) if we only get to see Matt Murdock and then a little tiny glimpse of Daredevil at the very end, be so freaking it badass. Will, it will be. And this all but assures now all those rumors about Matt Murdock being the lawyer for Spidey. And, right. And the, I mean, that's going to happen. And it would make so much sense, too, that when we were talking about Phase 4, that Sony hasn't released any details about uh, the Spider-Man third installment. And phew, I'm so excited. Now. I, Just seeing that, I was like, holy shit. And the, the, then the question is, will we see Punisher also? Right. Because that's about to come up around exactly. that same time. We know... Uh, John Bernthal helped Tom Holland with his Marvel audition. Yeah. And and Tom Holland has referenced both Daredevil and Punisher numerous times. And as we reported, what, a, two, three shows ago, Tom Holland was highly involved with the storyline of the third Spider-Man yeah. movie. So all of that is leading to maybe we're seeing these guys for sure in it. So exciting. Oh, that'd be so awesome. So exciting. All right. But it's crazy. It's been two years already. It has like, been crazy. Oh, my goodness. But, yes, top five segment, <laughs> our top five. Five is top five shows that you are streaming right now. Yes. Oh my goodness, there with all these new streaming services, and I mean trying some different stuff out too, because uh, just got CBS All Access back. I've never personally used it, so I'm searching all those shows. Yeah, I mean it's awesome. that's badass. And then Quibi, I got two shows on Quibi that are on my top five. Yeah, I feel like my top five is very rounded. It, it it's very well. You know, I'm trying to give a little bit of love to everybody. Yeah, I would say the Mandalorian. I would have Disney Plus on there, but I finished it already. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I'm just, you know. Exactly, exactly. But my number five on Netflix, streaming the old episodes, Supernatural. Yeah. Uh, I fucking love it. It's so, I'm so mad at myself for not getting on the bandwagon way before. And I mean, I know you guys have been telling me way before, but like, this is such an epic show. The chemistry between Sam and Dean, Jensen, and what's his face? Jared. Jared. <laughs> it's just <laughs> epic. So I, it's just great show. Great show. It's f- phenomenal, man. I mean, the Winchesters and Baby and yeah. Castiel. And I mean, come on, man. All of them. How can you not be watching it, right? Number five for me, I am currently checking out Hunters on Amazon Prime. Yeah. This show is tripping me out every time I watch it. Yeah. You know, they build it and it looked like it was a comedy, you know, and you kind of weren't like really sure. This right. shit is intense, it is. man. Every episode, I'm like, what the fuck? fuck? Yeah, I mean, and I love Logan Lerman, uh, and I just Al Pacino, just everybody. It, it's a phenomenal cast. I'm loving every bit of it. Hunters yeah. on Amazon Prime. Yeah, seriously, seriously. My number four. It is what it is because I'm just trying to get through the black hole because once you start, you cannot stop. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through Tiger King. Two more episodes so I can stop Maybe it. three. Maybe, Maybe three. three. <laughs> I don't know. But the more I watch it, the more I'm like, I'm, I feel dirty for watching this yeah, because it's yeah. like – I, it is animal cruelty, I feel like. Yes, they take care of them, but I, I don't know. It's just, it's. I feel like it's wrong. It, inside my core, it feels wrong, but I'm still trying to. But he to, just can't stop. I'm, I can't stop. I can't stop. 
That's funny. It's wrong, but I can't stop. Uh, number four for me, and I'm a huge, huge fan of this, Harley Quinn. Yes. Harley Quinn season two because I had already finished season one on DC Universe. If you guys, I'm telling you, if you guys don't have DC Universe, you should get it. It's so much good shit. Kaylee Cuoco is kicking ass as Harley Quinn on there. I love Margot Robbie live action, but Kaylee Cuoco's kicking ass as Harley Quinn, man. Definitely. Definitely a fun show if you guys haven't checked it out. Not kid friendly. Not kid friendly. It's a cartoon. Yeah, but not kid friendly. No, def- yeah. definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. <laughs> uh, number three, CBS All Access. I got Survivor catching up on the latest seasons that are not on Hulu because there are some old seasons on Hulu. But I just huge fan of Survivor. Like I love the game. I love what the social experiment does to the people. And I'm uh, catching up on thirty nine season thirty nine, uh, Island of the Idols, which mm. is pretty cool. It's mm. pretty cool. Uh, now they put uh, season. Season 440 on CBS All Access, so go. I'll have to start it after this. But I don't know how far they got into it before the quarantine. So. Right, right. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I would love to compete on Survivor. Oh, yeah. I think that would be badass. It would. And Naked and Afraid. <laughs> oh, you might be more afraid <laughs> <laughs> if I was on Naked and but Afraid. You know. But that that you know why I could never be on that show, though? Why? Because you're naked. And I would be like burnt to a crisp in a pile <laughs> yeah. of ash after about you an hour because they put them in these tropical locations. I don't know. Okay, on so to my pale. number three. So it's pale. true. It would be a disaster. Uh, my number three, uh, I, Hulu, I am – Re binge watching High Fidelity with yeah, Zoe yeah. Kravitz. I'm for the second time. It's such a brilliant show. If you love music, if you love Zoe Kravitz, if you just like, if you loved the original movie, um, you should be checking this shit out. It's it's a fantastic show. That's my number three. So good. I'm watching it again. Yes, yes. So good. Watch it twice. Uh, my number two is a Quibi series, Memory Hole, with host Will Arnett. Mm. Guys, oh my goodness, this is freaking hilarious. They go back and they look at the old trends like in the 80s the 70s it's so freaking funny we watched the first episode and it was like the the football players yes rapping the and super shit. bowl shuffle remember yeah. that one like, yes it's just so funny guys i'm not gonna lie i even watched it in the shower like it's that accessible <laughs> yeah it's like it's perfect for it it's perfect for it i can get through two episodes in one sitting i'm just gonna leave that one there <laughs> my number two Make it so number one. Yeah. Uh, Picard. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. If you guys saw my tweet, uh, 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 this might be the best Star Trek show or movie ever. Sir Jean-Luc Picard. Sir, Sir Patrick Stewart. He should be Sir Jean-Luc also. He should. Sir Patrick Stewart. He's kicking ass, dude. Yeah. This show is phenomenal. I finished it. I'm so, I, I binged it all in like a day and a half. Um, but if you guys haven't checked this out, if you love Discovery on CBS All Access, you should definitely check out Picard. A lot of cameos from a lot of the Star Trek The Next Generation peeps. And um, good shit, man. I can't wait for the second season. Definitely, definitely. And my number one right now is also a Quibi series, mm. Murder House Flip. Yeah, you guys yeah. are loving this. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's basically a reality house flipping home, but this is also like – where murders happen so they tell you the backstories and then they tell you how they make it like more homey can you ever make a house that people got murdered in a homey they try they try they try and it's it's hilarious it's epic it's definitely like it's different than hgtv like home flipping shows so Give that a try, man. I think it's great. I think it's great. There you go. My number one is like your number five with Supernatural. I I just I hate myself for not catching this show when it first came on and have been like a fan. Uh, Lucifer. Yeah. Holy shit! This show is epic. <laughs> like, why was I not watching yeah. this? Like, you know, you know what made me decide? Okay, I hear everybody talking about it, uh, but when he made the cameo on uh, Crisis, yeah, you know, in the CW CW crossover event, I'm like. All right, let me check this out. Like, yeah, I'm hooked. Like every night, I got my my glass of wine and Lucifer, and I'm just going, man. I'm just blowing through the seasons. But check that out on Netflix, man. And we know they're getting another season, yeah. So, so I'm excited about that. But yeah, I love that shit. Yeah, man. the chemistry <laughs> is great, and a couple of people from Supernatural are on there. Oh, like, shit. I mean, just it's great show. That's epic, Lucifer. What's wrong with us? I know you love a show about demons and I, demon hunters and everything. I, I love, love a show, show about, about Satan. Devil, yeah. Like, I mean, what the fuck? Does that say about us what time do we live in <laughs> quarantine that's what time but we they're live good in. guys yeah that, i'm not gonna lie that's why i like this they're they're spinning it and they're actually saying that lucifer's 
actually a good guy who's yeah. been wronged by daddy. Yeah. And they, they, they make you like him. Yeah. I know. It's so crazy. <laughs> That's enough to watch it right there. Right there. But yeah, I also got to the Crowley episodes on oh, Supernatural, yeah. so I'm starting to see that. Is that who so, took over? Maybe yeah. that's who took over for Lucifer, Crowley. Exactly. The, you know, the king of hell when Lucifer's not there. Exactly. Exactly. That's so good. So good. <laughs> what shows are you streaming right yes, now? Be sure tell to us. tell us. I mean, we love the fan interaction. We say every time, so we be do. sure to tell us. Leave a comment and whatever video you're watching right now. We love you guys. Great top five segment. It was a great top five segment. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And I mean, so sad about the box office. I want to go back to my I box know. office predictions. Don't you mix the Every box office time predictions? I roll by them on our rundown. I just, it makes me sad. But you know what's the, the good part about it all? What? You've been spot on every week. Every week. <laughs> You, like, you haven't been off about a single I'm on prediction, a roll, man. It's like, like boom, boom. I'm on so. a roll, but it's crazy. <laughs> but now it is time for our IMDb Pro Top Trending Segment. Yes. Oh, man. This film is still getting a lot of buzz right now. I'm telling you, man. It's not at the bottom of the food chain. It is not. It is <laughs> it's not. like kicking ass, Of course, man. we're talking about the platform. Yes. Oh, my goodness. A lot of people have been tweeting about it. A lot of people have been Facebooking about it. I mean, it's definitely one to check out. One that we still need to check out, not yeah. going to lie. I mean, he was saying about that about Lucifer the whole time, but then he checked it out. So and I'm know. now addicted. Exactly. So, uh, exactly. And Parasite's on Hulu now, so yeah, you check that yeah, out, too. Yeah, and I'm seeing everybody tweet about it now that they're able to watch it, so i got to watch well, it. Well, I guess it's it was like, getting hammered a little bit because of the subtitles, but it's like people... Yeah. It's a fucking foreign film. It's not Roma. No. <laughs> like I, I couldn't get through Roma. I'm... Sorry. Still. I, I couldn't. Still. I, still. still. <laughs> I, 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 mm-mm. I tried, but no. I think. Like, I think like four times. Yeah, no. I think Parasite would be much better. Than yeah, much definitely. Better than definitely. <laughs> and the top trending TV show, perfect for this week right. since our guest, it is Ozark, Ozark. Season 3. Yes. I mean, I've heard it's the best one yeah, so that's, far. Yeah. I mean, you know, we did good not to get any spoilers yeah. from Kevin's, just in case you, like us, haven't seen the whole season three yet. Yeah. But yeah, clearly it is kicking ass because uh, the star is Julia Garner. Exactly. From Ozark. From Ozark. <laughs> and the Americans and a bunch of other stuff. A whole she bunch kicks of stuff. Ass, but, yeah. Uh, but makes total sense. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, a lot of good content out right now, guys. And that's why you should get the IMDb Pro app because you can see what's in development, what what projects are in pre-production, production, post-production, what's about to come out to the theaters, it's what you true. can expect. I mean, this app is a one-stop shop for entertainment. It is so good, guys. And we're on it. And we're on it. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. I got a new headshot up. It looks freaking fantastic. That's right. Yes. That's right. I mean, our, our projects are on it. Yeah. Uh, you, and you can track us. Exactly. Want to know an update about the project? You can track us. You can like, track so us. So yeah. it, it's a cool-ass app. Definitely. It really is. Definitely. But anyway, guys, thank you again for Kevin L. Johnson for coming on the yes, show. Fun interview. Dude, so freaking fun. Be sure to follow him on all social media platforms. He's on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to follow the company on all social media platforms. We're everywhere. You know it. We're pinning. We're Facebooking. We're tweeting. Oh, we're Instagramming, living. Like, it's true. All the it's good true. shit. At you Crazy Ant Media. Definitely check out my pinner. Yeah. You know, my Pinterest. 80s cartoons. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because all the best companies have great mascots. Yes. It's true. It's true. So it's good. True. So good. But be sure to follow us both personally on social media, anywhere you're on social media. Myself, at JL Fantastic, and Crazy Ant Guy 1970. That's right. That's right. And be sure to subscribe to this podcast anywhere you listen to your podcast. Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio. You can watch us on YouTube. Honestly, your favorite podcast app, we're on it. Yeah. So check it yeah. us out. Check us out. And, I mean, if you don't want to search us on there, just go to our website, crazyantmedia.com. Anything you want to know about us, we're right there. we got it's the true. Inside the Crazy Ant Farm page. we got the Ravens Vision page. we got the weekly updates, State it's of true. the Company. we got basically anything and everything merchandise i mean latest and greatest crazy ant media gear you can get yourself a hat you can get yourself a shirt you can get yourself a sweatshirt you can get yourself a bonk bag email us about those bonk boxers that's right if you want ants in the pants let us know (laughs) (laughs) oh my goodness but this was definitely a fun episode like i said i'm just so happy that 
not as much of the industry news as about Corona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to drop it. My favorite parts, all right? Because this is the moment where we like to look back and say, what did we enjoy the most about the show? Obviously, always the interview segments. Oh, they're, yeah, they're always for sure. The, you know. But two things. The breaking news about Daredevil. Yep, same here. Oh, it's fucking pumped. So pumped. And uh, my other one... <laughs> <laughs> would be my rant about Doogie. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't want this Doogie remake. No, no. no. I'm such a fan of the original When show. did that come out? Was that like in the 80s or early 90s? Yes. Yes? yes. Just yes? Yes. That's uh, all yes. it was. <laughs> yes. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It, you're correct on both. I think it was late 80s or yeah. early 90s. So. Yeah. I think uh, – I don't know, man. There was a lot of good parts. There was a lot of good parts. I think – Probably my favorite part was talking about the Disney stuff and especially hitting the 50 million subscribers. It's crazy that it's been that quick. I mean, they've only been like around for like, what, five months? And they're freaking blowing up, basically. Everybody thought a few months in that it would dilute a little bit and people would drop off. But that's just not the case, guys. And we haven't even had a single Marvel show on there yet. No. I mean, just, just think about it, man. These Marvel shows are going to start hitting, and then season two of The Mandalorian, I think that number is just going to oh, yeah. boom. It's going to skyrocket. Yeah. It's going to skyrocket. But I'm super happy that Quibi finally dropped because we've been talking about that. I was very excited about that uh, finally coming to our phones. So yeah, I hope to see. That. Swimming with Sharks wasn't on there yet. Yeah. Though, and that's my that's the one I'm like the most excited about. The one I'm anticipating about. is uh, 50 Cent's uh, superhero yeah. one. Yeah. Like, yeah, I want to see gonna be that a good one. one too. Yeah, but so much good stuff. And like you said, the Daredevil news. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. So excited about that. That's going to be epic because Charlie Cox is a fucking great Matt Murdock. Dude, it really. I, but I want to see Deborah Ann Wall. Yeah, I, I want to see. Uh, yeah, I want to see Rutberg, Amy Rutberg. Like, we love Amy Rutberg. How can we not have her exactly. back? Foggy. And if. It, Jeffrey Cantor, yeah, like, Jeffrey Cantor, oh my God. all of them, man, and of course the Kingpin. The Kingpin. Who man. does not want to oh see Vincent D'Onfrio's Kingpin with Tom Holland's Spider Man? Oh my God, that would be so fucking epic. Definitely. Uh, like, <laughs> come on, Feige, bring it home, baby. Bring, bring it, it home. Together. Bring it all together. It'd be so fucking good. So fucking good. Uh, I was watching Doctor Phil this morning, and <laughs> there, yeah, it's those weird eyes where he's let just like, "Let me tell you." Oh my god! But anyway, you're gonna leave here alone. <laughs> but there is there is reason behind this madness, guys. There was freaking commercials about Oprah Winfrey. She has a podcast coming out with all of her great interviews on the Oprah Winfrey show. Yeah. So be sure to check that out because everybody knows we love the one and only Oprah. Oh!